Hi, everybody. Welcome to Track Talk Live. This is a special out of studio Q&A that we are running. Uh, as usual, my name is Leah. I will be your moderator today. We are going to be zooming you in on Doug and Chooch live from a very special train setup that they've got going on. But before we do that and dig into your questions, I do have a quick announcement to make. Pretty exciting. We are running 10 free downloadable model railroad posters as a promotion for you. So if you're looking to add some personality to your workspace, we've pulled together 10 free and funny, we always love funny, model railroading posters just for you. You can download those by clicking the banner below your video player or find the link in the description and make sure to share that with your friends so that they can spruce up their workspaces as well. And speaking of workspaces, I'm gonna send it over to Doug and Chooch over there. Hi guys, how is it going? Hello there. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, as uh, as with everybody, we are more or less sequestered where we are. And uh, I was telling Chooch earlier, it was actually kind of a good thing. This is my S scale Southern Pacific uh, Citrus District uh, layout, which has been photographed before. But I came out here early today and actually did some house cleaning. So I was making good use of my time. And uh, I uh, just wanted to mention a couple of things that uh, that I've been doing while I'm sequestered, and uh, uh, other than thinking about modeling work, you know, I have mentioned that um, uh, I've been working with a couple of guys who are doing Chicago, and uh, doing two Chicago elevated systems right now for Steve Doyle with S scale and Don Roback who is uh, N scale. And I was been reading this book, and it's got some. It's all it's all about all the railroads in Chicago, but some tremendous uh, photographs from the oh the mid '50s era. That uh, uh, so that that's been keeping me going. And then, of course, I'm a member of the Southern Pacific and Northwestern Pacific Historical Societies, and I've been reading this book that just came out on the Northwestern Pacific steam locomotives. And I just wanted to show this cover because I think it's a fantastic piece of artwork. And the system here. There you go. So, so I'm trying to trying to keep busy getting some things uh, organized. You know, here in Minnesota, spring is trying to come, and I'll probably be doing more outside things when the uh, when the weather gets better. Uh, just a couple of, of brief things that I wanted to show. Uh, yeah, those um, we were uh, working with Leah on our last month show. <coughs> And we were just uh, did not quite get to the uh, the sawing of the lotion bottle to make a tank out of it. Ah, that's right. We did talk about that. Which we'll have to. I'll have to mail it to your house now, Leo, so you can do this. <laughs> anyway, um, you want to just show it, Bob? And sure. We're just going to saw the end off of it. Yep. And uh, these are household items that basically free household items that you can do cool stuff right. out of. And so. Um, uh, razor saw. Use a, a a razor saw and saw the end and the cap off. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. That, makes, right there. that makes the bottom of a tank. It's right there, just right at the cap there. Um, I think what's going to be really helpful is actually going to just be keeping everything up at that table for this particular stream, just because we uh. Everybody watching, we usually have a very nice fancy setup in this studio where we've got multiple cameras and we can zoom in on some angles. But today we're not gonna be able to do that. So I'm just gonna ask Doug and Chooch to be really descriptive with their terms of what they're working with. So you guys can just sit down, do all of your demonstrations, but um, it's probably gonna be the easiest if you can stay there and just let the camera kind of do its own thing. All right. Well, this is another simple uh, uh, home project, uh, household items. Uh, this actually is a wine cork, and uh, this was another project for Leah. But I've shown this um, aluminum uh, furnace duct tape before, and this is a really easy project where you basically wrap the uh, wine cork with this aluminum duct tape, uh, so it looks like a silver tank. And then on the end. You can take a, just a regular steel washer, which is probably hard to see, and uh, hide the hole in the middle with a thumbtack. 
And that looks like a mm -hmm. hatch on the, we'll have to show that when we have a close-up camera, we'll have to show that. But anyway, the, the thumbtack looks like a hatch in the center of the tank. And it also um, uh, hides the hole in the washer. So you have a, a metal end of the tank and then the aluminum wrapping on the tank. In another project, uh, we'll get to some Q&A here quick. I just have all this stuff I wanted to show <laughs> this week. Uh, this is another project using a tortoise. And if, if I hope this shows up halfway decent. Uh, my buddy Brad, who's working uh, in, in or, uh, HO scale, uh, wanted to have use extra contacts on his tortoise. And so I use these micro switches, which come like this, and attach them to the tortoise. You can put one on either side. If you put one on either side, that will give you a double pull, double throw. Uh, additional set of contacts and let the, the knob itself and the tortoise is what activates the contacts. Very nice. So that is, I think, pretty much all of the uh, small stuff I have to show you. We're going to talk about some, uh, uh, or do you want to get into a couple of questions first or do you want to talk about our diorama that we're working on? Well, we do have a couple questions. Uh, we a couple of questions right? Let's do that. Let's start with a question. Um, this is about O scale. So can an O scale streetcar be programmed to stop at specific stations on my layout? Well, yes, there are many ways of doing it. Now, we don't know if that is uh, analog or digital. I guess that would be the first question. Uh, and if it's O scale two rail or O scale three rail. Mm -hmm. So if our listener can uh, uh, respond back in with those answers. Uh, there's multiple ways of doing it. So uh, yes, you can do it is the answer. And if we get more details, I could give them a more specific answer. Okay. I will keep an eye out for those details. And for now, we can move on to our next question. Uh, what is a good beginner layout that could be as simple or as detailed as you wish? So what is a good layout to expand on? Well, uh, a bit that, uh track that's that already prefab track it there's uses. easy tracks easy there's track, many yeah. brands of, of beginner trackage and you know when i was a kid we just started out with a four by eight piece of plywood which uh, is a good that's for right. it's good for beginner and it, you can do a lot of learning and then right. as you expand your talents you can you can go to a, a bigger more elaborate layout but uh, there's a lot of really good beginner stuff out there you don't even need to start with uh, dcc you can always graduate into that so uh, everything in model railroading can be expanded upon as you as you develop your talents. All right. Well, right now, I think we're waiting for a little bit more detail on that O scale, if that's coming in. Uh, did you want to talk about one of your projects that you were mentioning earlier? Yeah, well, uh, Bob's got a project he's working on, and along with that, I wanted to show a couple of uh, mock-up buildings that uh, that Actually, a friend of mine did for a SN3 layout that I was working on. And here's a little, it's actually a schoolhouse. And I mentioned that I use the postal cardboard, uh, that you can get the priority mail cardboard, uh, to mock up uh, buildings. And that's exactly what, uh, what this is. And if you, if you like what you've done, then you can actually build right over these surfaces. You can put shingles on, you can put siding on, and all that kind of thing. And so you're not really wasting your mock up. Evergreen uh, styrene would be perfect. Yeah. And uh, here's another one. This actually uh, was, a, but uh, there again, this is S scale, just made out of uh, cardboard. So it's basically free. The uh, doors and windows have been drawn in just to get an idea of how it's going to look. And these are actually to, to design to go up against the backdrop. So you can see the building isn't real deep on purpose because it was up against the backdrop. So that is the, uh, that is what I wanted to show. Now, Bob nice. actually is uh, the two of us are working on a uh, a module that's going to be a engine house that was on the Rock Island Railroad over in South St. Paul. Yep. The, our our uh, theory on this is uh, well, the engine house is on my railroad all the time, but I made the engine house removable. So what's nice about that? We can make this. Uh, we're going to make a diorama to bring to the various train shows. So let me do this. Let me get the uh, and step by step over the process of more than take you know card. multi yeah, take that off. multiple shows. We will show you the process of starting from basically uh, bare foam up to uh, a fully detailed so diorama. This, 
this foam I got, Doug, at Menards at a, at your local local or a Home uh, Depot, home maybe maybe not store. at Menards in their area. Yeah, so home right. Depot, but, maybe. Um, this is where I happen um, to find it. But this had this is the pink foam. It's it's mm -hmm. one inch. Now the nice thing about this, it already has texture paint applied to it. So I know in the, in the past I've had issues where the paint peels up. Um, I'm sure there's a, a really ultimate way to do it, but I figured this already has it on, and it's a nice texture. It's it a looks, nice yeah. earthy look. Looks like earth. Yeah. Yep. So now I've uh, ahead of time I put some track on here with the uh, with my uh, now what did I use here? Doug? This is this this is Loctite PL200, and it worked out actually pretty good for applying the track to this. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm going to do here. We got one more piece of track we're going to put on that goes on the other side of the engine house here. You have a uh, so, need to draw a line for that. Um, I'm just going by eye because if I put the if I put the uh, engine house here, huge. Well, well, you're starting to put some of that together. I do have a little bit more info on the O scale question from earlier. If Doug, you want to answer that question while Chooch is lining some things up. All right, so Doug, the info on that O scale is, it is an O scale three train fast T5 rack. Okay, three rail. Yes. Well, actually, because you only really need two rails for electrical pickup, the outer two rails are the same uh, electrically. So you can isolate the one of the outer rails and use that as a, as a uh, trip for the circuit. And in the old days, people used uh, relays. You can actually use relays to do it. Or uh, there are certain analog circuits you can buy. I've used the uh, uh, Circuitron, which basically is a circuit board with a time delay built into it and a relay. So if you want the car to come to a stop, once it crosses this gap into this particular section of track, you can have the car go in there and stop and then wait a certain amount of time, depending on how you set the timer, and then go again. Okay. Well, we well, also have the trolley running on fast track three rails using the Railing Z750 controller. Yeah, I mean the controller wouldn't really matter. I mean it's uh, basically it's the three rail that what allows you to do that. That third rail is basically an extra rail. The center rail is normally considered the the power rail, and then the outer two rails are considered the the common rail rails. So anyhow, like I say, if you uh, uh, if you just gap one of those outer rails and use that as a trip uh, segment. So uh, whenever you get into that circuit, you will trip, it'll, it'll trip a connection in between the center rail from the car and the center rail to that, that gap rail and then trigger your uh, circuit board or relay or whatever you're using. So it's actually pretty easy. People have done that for a long time and it works great. All right, well, hopefully that's pretty helpful. Uh, that's the info that we got. So I guess it's time to check in with Chooch. Chooch, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. We Doug has our little straight edge here, which is very helpful. Make sure you're um, now. I'm going to take my PL or PL 200 Loctite product here, and this is kind of one of the latest methods they like to use for laying your track. So I'm going to all, all you really need to do is put a bead along here. So this is where our straight track is going to go on the outside of our. Bead of cog here, Loctite. Now you can so now, you can draw a pencil line if you if you need particular track centers or something like that, and, and want to follow a line. And uh, so in this one we didn't, but uh, and the, uh, the key with this stuff yeah. is is spreading it out. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna just spread this out with our putty knife and very thin here. That's pretty good. That should work. Now we're going to take our track here, Doug. So I want to get it. This is our pad for the uh, sand tower. So I'm going to get it between the uh, mm -hmm. there. Use your we make use of your straight edge here, Doug. Yeah. Okay, very good. I like that. And this stuff, I if you wait for about I suppose ten hours for it to cure up, but it is it is on there. This is on there. 
And it, it'll come up to it with a putty knife. You could pry it off if need be. So. You folks at home can do this with your existing layout by just making a diorama that you can work on and then design it so it can be included with the bigger layout later. And it uh, gives you all kinds of, uh, all kinds of options. Um, we are also, I think, uh, was it last, uh, last show? We showed a G-scale wooden bridge that I'd like to use for for part of a uh, another diorama after we're done with this one. Well, um, let me uh, give Chucha a chance to answer a question here. This next one comes in from Jack. Uh, Jack wants to know, do most model railroaders follow a certain theme on their layout? A theme, well, meaning like, a, do you think a prototype or? A well, a theme, uh, uh, generally I think of a theme as a particular railroad yes. or a particular era. Like some, you know, for example, some people, if they grew up in a certain area and followed, remember, have memories of seeing a certain railroad where they lived, that's a big deal for what you may want to model. Some people, what they call freelance and make it look believable, that's another option. Like, for example, me, I lived for my whole life as a kid by the Sioux Line in Northeast mm -hmm. Minneapolis. So I, that's what drew me to uh, wanting to model the Sioux Line. And the Sioux Line connected to the Rock Island, of course, and St. Paul. So that's that explains why we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, well, for me, and I grew up uh, not too far from Bob, but I grew up in a neighborhood where we had a little local uh, short line called the Minneapolis Northfield and Southern, and I had a neighbor who worked for the railroad, and I could ride on the train anytime I wanted back in those days, in the mid-50s. And, of course, that's what really influenced me. I mean, the, the era, the, the, the type of equipment, and then the switching. Now, I still have a switching layout over here, but it is, is – uh, I got impressed with the Southern Pacific. So I, my theme is switching, and my original interest was the, this local Minnesota short line, but I developed that into uh, uh, California uh, switching short line. So, <laughs> you know, there's nothing that says that you can't go, you know, uh, uh, have something based in reality and then kind of freelance a little bit. You know, you don't have to stay with anything. That's when you're in modeling, hey, you can do whatever the heck you want. So, Whatever you like, you can do. I mean, some people like big mainline railroading and modern diesels, as an example. But generally speaking, if you're using modern equipment and long equipment, big diesels, you need bigger radius curves. And in my case, I was limited to a smaller space, and I couldn't, I couldn't run that kind of equipment anyway. So that's another point where you just, you know, you pick a theme, something you like, something that impressed you in your childhood, and then you might have to modify it to fit your situation. I mean, how many people do we know that have gone on vacations out west and they get attracted to wanting to model big trestles in the mountains and the tunnels? There's something like that to model rock work. I just love that. I like being yep. able to model rock work and making it look believable like real rock. I love that. Now in the Midwest, of course, it's a different deal. And um, a little bit more of a challenge sometimes with the scenery, but now with static grass and so, yeah. you know. Well, that's the other thing. There's many really good uh, scenery materials on there nowadays. You can do just about anything that you, uh, you set your mind to. Actually, I had a question this week online that somebody was asking about the, um, that Walther's uh, scenery material is kind of, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, for doing mountains, the oh, oh the, the uh, foam or the well, it's a sheet uh, sheet scenery material. Anyway, the uh, I've used that, and the the it's good for bigger spaces. It doesn't you can't really shape it into uh, fine detail, and so you can use that in big mountains. But then, uh, if you want to do fine detail, you have to do that separately. On it's top a good base of that to material. work with. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of a heavy. Like a foil kind of a material. Oh, yeah. Yep. And oh, so, yeah. oh, I'm actually going to give you a chance to answer this next question so that Chooch can get back into the shot. We're losing him a little bit off to the side. So we can have him go right back into his seat, I believe, is going to be really helpful for the stream. Um, and then while he's readjusting, this question's for you. Uh, someone's looking for information on how to build an elevated track 12 inches above my current layout. Any suggestions of where I can find suggestions for how to do this for O gauge? Well, uh, if he's talking about uh, something that would be scenically elevated, like a Chicago elevated, I've been going through all kinds of research lately, learning about the Chicago elevated, and uh, you know, it's quite I built the real thing. But uh, uh, 
my buddy in North Carolina does uh, 3D printing and uh, laser cutting and all that kind of stuff. And he actually is in his end scale, he's making his own structural uh, members and structural members for this, this uh, elevator. So that is one way of doing it. If you wanted to do something that would look like the Chicago elevator, and there's actually a, a group that uh, specializes just in that kind of thing. They can learn a lot about it. It's a very, it's a very interesting study. Um, other than that, if you're not really interested in doing something prototypical, uh, you know, I we've had uh, layouts where guys maybe need to fly a track over another section of the layout, and uh, that can be built. You want if you're going to do it that way, you want to keep it very <coughs> simple so that it's not distracting to the eye. We've actually uh, cut shapes using uh, plywood with a masonite, eighth inch masonite girder on the side with, uh, that would follow the shape of the curve and then mounted on uh, large diameter uh, dowels up the center, which would maybe for old gauge might be say a one inch dowel. Okay. And that makes it real easy setting the grades and all that kind of thing. So okay. I hope that answers the question. Well, we'll move on and we'll let Chooch answer this next one then. Um, All right. I'm installing Woodland Scenics, Just Plug HO gauge wall lanterns, goosenecks, and street lights. The wires from these units are so thin, it appears that the wire is painted, not rubber or plastic coated. Do you have any questions for stripping the ends for solder or attachment to their connection with a push button and a hole to insert the wire end? It's what I'm thinking of. There's a the wire has a coating on it. Sometimes I've had luck with uh, if it's not regular insulation, uh, a cigarette lighter to get it so you can solder it to make the wire bare. If it's the material I'm thinking. Well, of. One, I've actually used those very same lights with uh, mm -hmm. my buddy Don's uh, in scale, and it, what they actually want you to buy their extension cord. Okay. There's an extension mm -hmm. cord for those lights, and uh, uh, so. What you can do is, is actually rather than cutting the ends off, would be to solder a wire right on to, into the plug. I assume it's the male version of a plug coming from the light. I can't remember anymore, but you can actually solder onto those pins for the plug. That'd be much easier than trying to strip that little tinsel wire. And then uh, you can use a shrink tube to uh, to protect the connection, but that is what I probably I would do rather than buying their extension cords, especially if you're running a long distance. So kind of modify the plug rather than cutting it off. Okay. Hopefully that will be a helpful way to deal with those little teeny tiny wires. Uh, just a reminder, if you've got more questions, you can drop them into the chat box. But we are getting near to our halfway point here. So I did want to remind you, if you were just joining us and missed the very beginning of our live stream, uh, we are running a promotion of 10 free downloadable model railroad posters. So this is a great way to add some personality to your workspace. I have a feeling that we may be all sharing our workspaces much more frequently. So there's some 10 free and funny model railroading posters for you to use. Share that information with your friends as you are connecting over this community online, especially in these times right here. So we are in the middle of our Q&A Track Talk Live, our very first social distancing Track Talk Live. Uh, and if you're just joining us, hop on in, send us any questions that you may have. And in the meantime, Doug and Chooch are showing us what it looks like in a real workstation instead of in the studio. <laughs> well, we were going to do this in the studio originally, and uh, uh, we hope to do more of these hands-on projects as time goes on. So, in fact, that, that reminds me, I was going to suggest if, if uh, the viewers have particular projects that they would like to see, be sure and uh, let us know, and then we'll, uh, we'll work on those. Well, in the meantime, how about if I do a couple more things on our module here? Yeah, and looks like you're now, gonna fill in some ties. Yep, um, I put our track down now while our, our glue is still a little bit pliable. I've got some wood ties. Um, it's probably not so important with an engine terminal, but I'm gonna put my wooden ties under my rails there. And these you know, will stick very nicely when the glue dries. That's, I was going to say that's good because I had a, a mm -hmm. question online about that just recently too, about when you, how do you fill in the gaps between the 
section, especially if you're on a curve, it's a curve you have to cut because the inside rail is shorter, so you have to uh, cut the track, and it end, uh, ends up being more, you know, more obvious on a curve. And you, you, and also on a curve, you want to make sure you have a really good track joint. So uh, in this particular case, it's going to be pretty well covered with uh, dirt and you can see, junk, and you can barely see the ties. You know, yeah, it's so hard to know, see this show on camera. But, yeah, did you show that last time? Last time? I, I think I did. So. Uh, yeah, the, the service area is still covered with muck and everything. You can't really see the ties anyway. But uh, 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 certainly if you have gaps in your section track when you put it together, then you want to add wood ties. Or you can take the plastic ties, too, and shave them down. I've done that. Shave the spike heads off. That makes and that's a good idea. In. So, Well, real quick here, there's um, there was a uh, – at the Inver Grove – Rock Island facility was a was a sand fuel tower. That's what a lot of engine facilities had. These Shoreham had one mm -hmm. on the Sioux line on Central Avenue. Well, I copied Mike Daniels. He built this years ago. He scratch built his out of Canis brass. So I did the same. So this is completely scratch built. I made it to be removable from the layout. So now I made put a little pad in here so that a we come down pad, to a yeah. little concrete pad with little brass tubing in here to mount our type our uh, tower it's a beautiful looking sand and now we have little posts on the sides that i copied for our hoses our fueling hoses so they're in there now mm -hmm. there's our sand tower and now real quick here let me get underneath here so i can grab our engine house i can show everyone the engine mm -hmm. house here say while he's doing that i wanted to mention too you know i had the uh, last uh, this would have been last week i had a, a trip scheduled to go down to gulfport mm -hmm. mississippi to visit the Mississippi Coast Model Railroad Museum and take some pictures that I could show online. Well, uh, actually, my flight got canceled. <laughs> Do <Dude, And> you? <laughs> the, unfortunately, the, a super nice guy that runs it, and uh, uh, he, they were doing a fifth anniversary uh, big open house there. Well, of course, that had to be canceled too. So he's planning on redoing it sometime later this summer. Hopefully, things will calm down and I will get down there. But if uh, if you're interested in looking uh, looking his museum up, it's MC, let's see, Mississippi Coast, MCMRM, uh, dot org. Um, uh, super nice guy. So uh, you can look that up while you're while you're sequestered at home and doing your modeling projects and reading railroad books and researching right. and all that kind of thing. So yep. uh, your time you can you can fill up your time. It's probably a lot of traffic on the internet these days too. They say that yeah, the <laughs> internet is real busy. Yep. Now, real quick, Doug. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Another another thing here. My uh, our engine house needs a uh, concrete foundation, a pad. Mm -hmm. So what I used is this product called Foam Core, mm -hmm. and you get this at art supply stores. And what's nice about it, it's like styrene. It's got a styrene sheet, very thin styrene sheet on each side of the foam. What's nice about this, you can score it, and snaps and that makes a nice clear and that's how yep. i built the uh, platform i took my airbrush and i found some uh flat sand color a uh, concrete cut to make a concrete believable concrete mm -hmm. look mm -hmm. looks now, like dirty old yep, and we yeah. can even weather that with some powders but now this is the last part of the concrete that goes on the other side of the uh, track here the outside track and i put my my pl 200s on there and i'm going to position this and now you know go. a person can have a lot of fun um, detailing uh, yes. an engine house or even roundhouse because uh, there's so much interesting uh, stuff inside and you probably can't see my roundhouse real well behind me here but uh, uh, I'm sure we've had it on the show before and and uh, I am have started with the interior detailing but I uh, plan to add more including uh, lighting and I was mentioned with Chush earlier what I do is I put some 020 wire in there, kind of like a conduit and spaced it out maybe eh, three quarters of an inch apart around. And then I'm using the Miniatronics uh, small bulbs with shades. Uh, and I, I cut the leads real short. You probably can't see these either, but Miniatronics uh, small bulb with brass shades. They're at 12, 12 volt. And I'll put them in there kind of dim so they look like dingy old bulbs. Right. But I, I cut the wire short and then wrap the leads around those two uh, brass wires and then right. solder for your contacts. And then, of course, once everything's all done, you can you can paint it so it just looks like black, dirty old conduit. But uh, even in the daytime, you have 
question actually has to do with interior designing. So a uh, guest is asking, I'm looking for products to use to create interiors in HO structures. I'm aware of City Classics window dressing, Rumets, and John's interior photo sheets. And I'm wondering if there are other manufacturers you would recommend. So if you want to continue on that line, Doug, that would be great. Okay, well, we can show the interior this as we get going. But I'll tell you what, I've used a lot of Model Tech products. And Model Tech makes all scales. I mean, they even make S, which is pretty cool. Uh, uh, right, uh, well, it's out of the range of it. I, and I think I showed a picture of my, my uh, coastal uh, hardware building here not too long ago online but i actually used uh, what was sold as workbenches and i put them in there and made them look like display uh, shelves inside of a hardware store and they really work great and the thing is you can use a lot of two-dimensional cutouts i put two-dimensional cutouts on the walls for signs and and your detailing doesn't have to be perfect because the stars going to be kind of hazy when you're looking in through the windows because there again the lights wouldn't be on real bright but you know, in a hardware store, even during the day, they would have their, their lights on. So you would see something in there. And I put some people in there. And we'll have to show an interior shot of that. Uh, I have a couple other buildings. I have my chief restaurant. And I have right over here my stand-up uh, Frank's Bar. And all of those need a certain amount of interior detail. And it can be a little bit, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's inside. Just, uh, But you want to definitely get that flavor. That, nothing to me seems more... What's the word? You know, unfinished and just a hollow building where you look right mm -hmm. straight through it. And you can use window shades. You can actually buy um, uh, uh, CC Crow products has Venetian blinds, believe it or not. And it's the most amazing thing. You, you, the way they're laser cut, you actually twist the paper a little bit and it turns the blinds. It's doggone this thing. Anyway, so you can actually say have Venetian blinds in a window and then have the light on behind. I mean, what a neat effect. It is a nice effect. So uh, CC Crow is another one. Um, yeah. Well, you really got me going on the uh, engine house, the lighting inside this engine house. So Now, can you show it? Let's hold it up so they can see the inside a little bit. Maybe. Inside. There's so, not much detail now, but with interior lighting and put you know some what window I, glass on it. What I found out in my roundhouse, they, they actually used it as kind of a dirty white paint. It was a whitewash paint. On the inside, and that's okay. what I did on mine back there. That uh, uh, so it's a dirty white paint. I suppose I did that to kind of make it brighter in there. Well, it'll show up nicer, and you can put your bulbs right. on real stat and then yeah. adjust the yeah. brightness in that. So, way. and then I have workbenches. I actually made a little uh, heart in, in there with a uh, stone chimney in the back corner, and I actually plan on removing my roundhouse here one of these days pretty soon to do more interior detailing. And when when I do that, we'll have to show it on. Uh, one of these track talk lives. Um, now, what I was going to mention, this foam core happens to be about the right height for a Code 100 track. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have going through the engine house. On the outside pieces, I have Code 83. It just worked out that way, and it'll look nice and believable. So now that I've positioned this, it looks like everything fits properly. I'm going to take it off, and let's just put this here for a second. Now my engine house, the uh, engine house, the uh, tower, let's take off. There, I'll take put that aside. Now, the, I really like the zebra stripes you did on the doors. Is that a decal or? A... Um, I believe that's a decal. Otherwise, I could have probably they did it so many years ago. But that's what the real yeah, one has. Yeah, is I that see that. The, yeah, the real one had that zebra stripe. I believe these were Grant line, and I made them. Grant line I hinged them somehow. I don't remember how. I probably pieces of brass pins in there for wire the wire for the hinges. You know, Grant line. I'm not so sure exactly. Grantline had a lot of it. Oh, SS Limited, who is there through uh, Bowser. Right. Uh, they have a lot of interior detail. Some detailed parts. I'm well, actually going to interrupt just briefly here. We have a couple questions yep. that have stacked up, so I'm going to start shooting these to you quickly. Uh, why don't you start this next one? How do you keep bubbles from forming <laughs> when using realistic water? Well, uh, in my experience, you have to be real careful not to, you know, like when you're stirring it up or mixing it up uh, or even brushing it, you want to be real careful not to create bubbles in the first place. So that's my recommendation. Be real careful when you're using it. Don't shake up the bottle or anything like that. Just be real careful and, and spread it out. And uh, if bo uh, bubbles appear, uh, I have a pin, a T-pin ready 
where I can pop the bubbles before the, the uh, realistic water actually sets. And, uh, you know, there's talk about blowing, and I'm, I'm not sure if it works so well with realistic water, but there, with, the, with the epoxy water, there was, for some reason you could blow on the, on the water and something in the carbon dioxide would make the bubbles come to the surface. Well, I haven't tried that with realistic water, but um, the other thing is with realistic water, you don't have to do it all in one coat. So if you're concerned about bubbles, do light coats at a time, very light coats, and you can just go keep going over until you get the depth you want. And that would certainly help prevent, at least prevent bigger bubbles. All right, great. Our next question is about track work here. Uh, Joseph is asking, how do you do your track work at an adjoining table so that the table can be removed? Maybe Chooch wants to take this one. Well, if you do that, then you could have a little sp spanner sections to, um, cause I, I'm actually dealing with that down in my basement. Now I was showing Doug, I making a couple of sections removable and there's some really neat methods I've learned through the last couple of years. Um, printed circuit board material for the ties and that that keeps your rails engaged so if you have a removable section you want to take out um which it sounds like that's what we're dealing with here right doug um that you could um the printed circuit board ties you side of your rails to the ties on each mm -hmm. side and it'll keep them your, your rails in perfect gauge for that removable section and then of course you cut your printed circuit board with a with a uh, dremel so there's you don't have a short circuit then Yep. Well, I wanted to show this. There's something else I wanted to talk about. This reminded me because I got a question just recently about this too. These are little aluminum framing materials. You can buy them in different sizes and shapes and all that. And for hanging up big pictures where you can basically just clean them together. And uh, being aluminum, they're very true. And you can actually use these pieces as an interlock when you drop a, a module down on your layout. And they'll hold it real precise. I mean, I think better than uh, better than wood, generally speaking. So uh, that's something you can look in. I got actually got these framing materials at my uh, local home improvement store. So you can look around and see what they have there in their framing department. And and like I said, many different sizes and shapes. So uh, that that works real good. All right. Well, Isaac has our next question. Uh, so I'll start this over to Doug. How do you power more than one train at a time? Do you have separate transformers? I plan on running 18 trains. Holy cow. You know what this gentleman needs? He needs <laughs> DCC. Because I'm thinking he's thinking analog right now. I think that's what we're talking, right? Uh, maybe. maybe. I, yeah, he didn't say whether he's analog or DCC. That's kind of important. He could he could respond back. But uh, uh, with with uh, the old analog system, you could only run one one train per section of track called a block uh, at a time because you had to have each locomotive had to have its own speed control, so you had to have a, a power supply that would basically follow the the train around the layout, and then you had to have all these complicated control panels so that you could interconnect the switches and all that to uh, uh, you know to keep the the power supply connected to the correct train. Now, as, as Chooch uh, said, uh, uh, DCC might be the way to go uh, because there's virtually unlimited amount of uh, trains you could run. And being as how the DCC is a radio control system that runs in the rails, and the locomotives have uh, decoders. So the decoders then would, uh, would recognize their particular address and then respond, and that way it, it saves uh, just saves all of this complicated wiring. Uh, not only that, you can have sound and you know, working lights and all that kind of thing. And so, uh, I would recommend in his case to go uh, DCC. It's a little more expensive, but it's really a it's a just so much easier in the long run. Well, it's funny we're talking about wiring the track because we want this module to be wired to bring to the train show and run DCC, so we can show off our locomotives yeah. with the sound so all these four these four tracks i'm going to bridge together and, and mm -hmm. uh so they're going to run off of one power supply because it's dcc because yep. every locomotive will have an address of course and so you very cool. only need one power supply for a dcc and then the address for the decoder is normally the locomotive number on the cab so you can punch in a whatever it might be three or four digit number and that will be that particular number and also along with that you can 
you can uh, consist uh, locomotives. So if you want to run a two, three, four locomotive consist, there is actually a way of doing that in the DCC system. So the locomotives all run uniformly together. All right. Gonna, if it's if it's okay, I'm going to show demonstrate now. When we lay our track here, you, what the last thing you want when you lay your uh, when you're modeling track is shiny rails and shiny ties, shiny plastic ties. So what the next step is after we've laid our track, um, now of course if you're doing this on a main line, you would have a road bed. You would have use the cork or the or the uh, Woodland Scenics cork or the uh, foam road yeah, bed. Yeah, this is not an elevated. This is, this is gonna be full, covered with dirt. <laughs> although. Real dirt, so. Although you know about it. Yeah. You can always cut ditches in the foam. I like you cutting do that. drainage That's, ditches in the foam. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't uh, be in as how this yard track is. You wouldn't be at an elevated uh, bed, but it, you could certainly have some drainage ditches. And I think that really looks cool. There could be a spot where there'd be a culvert under the track or something. Yep. And so that's something to think about too. Yep. I think to get dimension of any kind, up and down, whatever you do, really adds a lot more realism to it. Foam yeah. is easy to cut. Too. Yeah. So, so that's uh, carved. Yeah. yeah. So right now, let's just go ahead, and I'm going to just give this some nice. This is flat black. That's that gives a, your track and your rail a nice base color for your weathering powders to bite into. So I'm just we won't do too much because it does. Uh, we don't have real good ventilation down here, but. I just actually do out. have in the other side over there. I have a spray booth with a vent fan. So just for this yeah. purpose, let's get some weathering on um, here. No, we are going to uh, ballast this. And this is. I'm going to throw uh, some dirt. I'm going to. What I do, I go up to by the real tracks and get some. I have an old flower sifter I keep in my trunk, and I got have a kitty litter pail and. Uh, Fill that thing with sifted dirt, and I'll show you what it looks like here yep, in, yep. in a second here. Uh, and then, you know what I like to do, too? I take a little bit of uh, Woodland Scenic's uh, burnt grass material and add it in with the dirt. That gives it a different So it gives color. it like a little bit of grass coming through the dirt. Okay. So just kind of mix it together when you put it down. Or you can even sprinkle a little bit over the top on the second coat. We're almost done covering. You want your rails and your ties covered, definitely. I'm glad we're not in the studio with this because. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, while you're having a little bit of time, can I slide another question in or are you? Whatever you're ready. Yeah. yeah, whatever you're ready. Just All right. In. This yeah. question comes from another Doug. This is Doug B. So Doug would like yeah. to know, please explain what a bus wire is. Does it originate from the power pack and then loop around the layout back to the power pack or terminate someplace? Thanks. Well, there are more than one way of doing that, and a bus wire is a is a basically a heavy gauge wire that that feeds the power around the layout. Now, you could have more than one set of bus wires. You might have a, a DCC bus wire. You might have a, a bus wire that runs uh, building lights or switches or something like that. Or in the case of your DCC, if you have multiple circuit breakers then you would have the bus wire out of the circuit breaker. If you have a big layout, you don't necessarily want the entire layout in one circuit breaker. You want to break it up. And so then each uh, circuit breaker would have its bus wire. And depending on where you are going with the bus wire, uh, basically uh, in the old days with the analog, we used to actually talk about making the loop with the bus wire. It would keep the voltage uh, uh, constant throughout the wire is. But with DCC, it's a little different because uh, you have uh, basically an AC. It's an AC voltage with uh, radio signal. So to have it run a distance and then come back, you could actually get ghosting in the signal. So for DCC, and there is a uh, some folks, uh, probably like Digitrags, I'm not sure who else, sends a, actually a, a capacitor, sells a capacitor circuit you can put on the end of the bus wire. And I've never used it. I've never had a problem with it. But uh, there is a, there is a, a product available to uh, to terminate the, uh, the DCC bus wire. All right. Well, hopefully that's a helpful answer for the other Doug out there listening. <laughs> we do have one more question that I could slide in, but I didn't know if Chooch wanted to start to narrate a little bit more of what he's doing for the moment. What I'm doing here, I, I found. In fact, I found this little product, Doug, at uh, looks like Target or a, or oh, a, nice. a, a. It's just it's for like 
cooking in the cooking area. It's a nice little screen. Almost looks like a tea strainer. Yeah, like a strainer. It probably but is it's that. Real fine, I, I believe that's what it is. And it's it real works, fine mesh. It works um, really good for, as you can tell, Doug, for applying our dirt. <laughs> it's real and fine mesh. I have nothing. A, you know, I have a strainer like Yay that I use, and it's pretty fine. I mean, it's the finest grain I could find. But it's not as fine as that one. So I bet you that's a tea streamer. This is a nice size, too, for um, just doing short sections. But I, I keep this with my scenery. It's nice being here with, with all my tools that are right next to me here, so I can just reach over and grab things. But, uh, Very nice. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you can never have too many, uh, too many tools. Nothing too scientific here. I'm putting my sifted dirt. It's real. Isn't that nice dirt, Doug? Oh, that's <laughs> real dirt from? It's real dirt, you know, mm -hmm. from an old flower sifter. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, um, I'm just going to put that on here, and it's, and then I have my little handy brush here. Let's do it. Brush it out. This engine house mm -hmm. terminal. There is nothing neat about this, or no nice ballast. It's just dirt covering the ties. Now that looks like a shaving brush. This mm -hmm. is a makeup brush. Well, or, 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 yeah, makeup brush. Shave, but it kind of does yeah, look like yeah. a shave. So there. I'm just, now you're working with um, very, very teeny tiny granules that you've been sifting. Um, I'm wondering if we lost Doug and Chooch for a moment. It looks like we might have lost them as they're building their diorama. Uh, we're actually nearing the end of the hour anyways, so I'm thinking that maybe this is a natural stopping point. If you didn't get your questions answered today, thank you, first of all, for hanging out with a little bit of uh, technical difficulties changing over to this particular way of doing Track Talk Live. But my name is Leah, and before I let you go, I am gonna remind you about that poster download. That is 10 posters. Keep it funny, keep it light in your workspace, and you can just click on the link either in the description or right underneath your video box. Keep your questions in mind. We will be doing this again. I know Doug and Chooch are very excited to be able to share information. Even when we can't be in the studio, we can still come to you live, and we will be looking forward to the next Track Talk Live. Hang in there, and we'll see you soon.